Okay, yeah. So what we're going to be looking at today is just going to going through um uh back trader um which is the back testing which is the back testing which is one of the back testing frameworks that have that have been recommended for this week's challenge. Um yeah, so we're just going to go through the quick start guide and um actually um have everyone actually run their first back test if you have not done so um already um yeah so let me share my screen we can get started okay yeah so if you want to follow along you can also have um the quick start guide opened up um on your brother yeah so back trader is just a back testing framework like we've seen um and uh yeah it allows us to it builds this it is a framework that really allows us to um easily run our back tests right um so it, it would generate all the metrics that are required um and it also it also handles all of the logic like um adding strategies um adding data feeds um and doing all of those cumbersome work um that you'd have to do um when you actually run your back test right um so yeah that's uh directory uh and let's open it up using vs code So Backtrader is simply installable via pip. Um, so let's start off by creating a virtual environment um, because we're going to actually also have uh, also have to interact with a couple of other packages. So let's create a virtual environment, um, which is going to encapsulate everything that we're going to install. Um, let's take that starts, we can just give it So we have our virtual environment created. Um, let's activate it. Um, and we would start off by installing Backtrader, right? And let's install Backtrader inside of our virtual environment. Yeah, and we're all set, right? Um, yeah, and this quick start guide um, gets you started and let's go through some of the core concepts that you're um, going to have to deal with um, if you're using Backtrader, right? Um, so Backtraders, um, one of the most basic concepts is um, the concepts of lines, right? Um, so almost everything um, in Backtrader can be considered a line, um, but like, um, yeah, all the data feeds, the indicators and the strategies have lines. Uh, so if we're talking about um, the data feeds, which is that a question? Okay. Yeah, Wang Wei. Um, could you just uh, what is it? Uh, the how you created a virtual environment? Uh, just real quick. Um. Okay. So yeah, I created um using the. I'm not using Quanda at the moment, um, so just the default um, virtual environment uh, package that is shipped in with Python. Um, so just the command was uh, Python 3 uh, hyphen M, uh, yeah, the one under the text. Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Fusil. Just a quick question. Uh, just occurred in my mind when you write uh, virtual code environment. Uh, virtual when you create the virtual environment, when you create this virtual environment and install uh, as many uh, as many libraries as you want to install and modules, and when you finally want to use this virtual environment outside your uh, outside your local machine. So imagine you are going to use this environment in the AWS instance. 
is this going to work? Is this virtual environment going to work? Or do we need to create another virtual environment in the AWS instance and install all the users? Yeah, you, you can you can ship your virtual environment, but that is not the, the way to go, right? If you're uh, moving things along, you should not be moving along your virtual environment. You should be moving along your code, right? And so in that case, you'd have uh, a requirements.txt file, uh, which would contain all of the packages that you would you'd actually install and you'd go on to create your virtual to create a virtual environment and install those packages so yeah moving the, yeah. so so that is the standard way of doing it but mm -hmm. does, yes does the, I, I know i know that but that, my question was does this virtual environment really works if it was going to be shipped on aws instance mm -hmm. and if we wrote the source uh, bin slash activate whatever um, the code is. Does it work on the virtual? It's just the, yeah, yeah. It's just yeah, it does. Um, it's if you, to my mind. Okay. yeah, if you have the same the same environment, um, the same Python version, of course, you might face issues if you're um, if it's a different maybe operating system or something like that. But you can definitely ship the virtual environment as well. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, yeah. So um, going back to back to your um. Yeah, so data features have lines, indicators have lines, and strategies have lines, right? Um, so when we talk about um, data features as lines, um, we're going to work um, on backtesting uh, Netflix data, data set that we're going to get from Yahoo Finance. Um, but yeah, so the single line, like maybe the closing value, I think let's, uh, let's, let's get the data now. Uh, so, so. You can get the historical data. Uh, yeah, so historical data, I think I've, I've already downloaded it. Yeah, so we're getting, um, yeah, so I already had it. I already had downloaded uh, the Netflix.csv file. So yeah, uh, so this is, um, net, this is the trading value of Netflix, like, right? So this is the shares that the, the price of Netflix stock that has been trading uh, throughout time that you can download um, from Yahoo Finance. Um, let me send the link here. Um, yeah, you can download it to follow along exactly. And so um, in Backtrader, one, one, what it considers a line is um, this single column right here, right? So this opening value can be consider, uh, is considered a line. Um, this high value is considered a line. Uh, yeah, this closing value, this adjusted close, and the volumes are each considered as lines, right? Um, and it is going to be iterating to each of these lines to actually make any decisions, to make that buy or sell decision um, that is, at the end of the day, um, going to make us profitable, right? Um, yeah, so that's the case and the other basic concept that you need to know is it uses the index zero approach um which means it's it just iterates to um it just iterates two lines and you can get access to it by um a simple abstraction just like um you'd index uh, you you'd index an array right um you you'd get the value of an array simply by starting from zero and going to some specific index and you can get the last item uh, in an array by using minus one, right? Um, and so it's, it, it gives this consistency um, that Python actually um, uses as well, right? And so let's start with the very basic setup. Let's forget about the data for now. Um, and let's um, simply run the, the initial setup that we have here, right? Um, so we just create a simplified Python file um so backtest uh actuator dot pi um and let's go what each of these lines are um please um what's happening okay so some of it was left out Uh, I'm not sure what I have open. Uh, it's a bit laggy. Yet.
uh, Azaria might be having an internet issue. Uh, you should join back in a minute. Uh, Uh, okay, let me call him and uh, I will get back to you guys. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, uh, Go I cried. Yeah, actually, was the wrong window. Uh, yeah, so going back, I think let me share my screen. Um, and we're going to uh, back to this quick story, guys, right? Um, okay, yeah, so we've talked about lines, um, we've talked about the index zero approach. Um, yeah, and we were talking about what each of these lines are actually doing, right? Um, so um back traders um back traders engine that actually does this uh trading um that actually um does all of the things that that our back testing includes right um adding the data feed um placing those orders to actually buy or sell um specific assets is um is done by Cerebro, right? And so Cerebro is the main engine um, that is doing all of this. And so that is what we're doing here. And this future um, just allows us to have some implementations um, that a current Python release that Backtrader was implemented on uh, doesn't have. And it allows to have this, this sort of um, it allows this newer newer implementations that are not yet available um, in specific in the current release. Um, so this this is not really anything to do with Backtrader, um, yeah, but with Python itself. But we're just creating that um, sort of that trader which is going to do everything uh, everything in our backtest, right? Um, and what this Cerebro does, what this um, main actor um, of our backtest actually does is um, it has um, an initial value. Um, so an initial money that it is going to use to buy a specific asset, right? Whether it's um, the stock of Netflix, whether it's Bitcoin, whether it's um, any crypto asset, um, it has some specific value and it is going to run those trades, right? It's going to place a buy signal or it's going to place um, a sell signal. Um, it's going to open various positions, um, maybe a long or a short position. Um, yeah, and um, throughout that time, throughout that line feed um, or throughout this um, specific CSV or throughout the specific time series. Um, yeah, and it's going to end up with some value. Uh, so um, yeah, the virtual environment is activated, so we can run um, the based .py. And what you see is, um, yeah, it started off uh, this get value, gets the value that uh, gets the money that um, our main actor um, actually does, has, right? So the main actor started off with $10,000. Um, if we're, using the concept of dollars, um, and it ends up with uh, a value of 10,000. Because as you can see, there is really nothing, right? This main actor, it, it doesn't even have a data feed at the moment. It's not getting access to this Netflix.csv file, or it's not even uh, being any strategy, right? It's not placing any buy orders, it's not placing any sell orders, it's just, it's just starting off with 10,000, um, it's holding that off, and it's ending with 10,000, right? Um, yeah, and so this in this example, what has happened is yeah, actually it was imported. The Cerebro engine was instantiated. Um, the resulting Cerebro instance was told to run or loop over the data when which we don't have any data, and the resulting outcome was printed, which is just the portfolio value that we have. Um, yeah, and so you might not actually have ten thousand um, dollars. You might have more. You might have less. Um, and so how you can change um, the value that you start off with is using the set cash method, right? 
Um, so you could have this set cash method and let's say you just have a thousand dollars. So you would set this to a thousand dollars, right? And so this um, this engine that is um, placing all our trades um, or that is maybe simulating us if we're the ones that actually um, just want to trade over some specific market, um, we could use this set cash, right? And so if we run our script now, we just simply start off, start off with $1,000 and we end with, again, with a thousand dollars because we have really not done anything. Um, yeah, so right now it's just, you're giving it $1,000, you're, and it's ending with a thousand dollars. But let's add a data field, right? Let's add this Netflix.csv file. Um, let's give let's give our Cerebro engine this um, Netflix.csv file and have it uh, parse through each of these dates um so that we can do manipulations later on right um and so how we would do that is um we would simply just add the data to setup using this add data method and there is this abstraction where we have to create a data feed um this is now using um the yahoo finance csv data um data feed because we've downloaded it um we've downloaded it from yahoo finance itself um, but you, but yeah, there are multiple ways to create your data feed. You can create data feeds using pandas. Um, yeah, and there are definitely multiple ways uh, to create your data feed, right? Um, and so let's give our cerebral our data feed, right? Um, yeah, and so we have our Netflix.csv right here next to our scripts. So we do the and we can uh, simply just give the Netflix.csv file and it's importing that it's using that time. So we need to import the date time at this moment, right? Um, yeah, and so when we create a data feed, it actually um, gives us multiple options. We're not just passing um, this book CSV file, but we can actually um, specify the date range where, uh, our backtest is going to run, right? So let's say um, right now it's October 11, right? Um, maybe I just want to test my backtest over when does this Netflix.csv file start? Okay, so it starts off at 2021-09-23, um, right? So let's say I just want to test this for um, for a period of only the mon the nine months, the nine months, the nine months of the year right? And so only over this period. And so I could specify like only backtest starting from this date to this date. Um, and so let's, let's do that. Um, um, I'll pass values before this date. Um, so from date, um, we want to start off 2021 and the 23rd. Um, and, um, Okay, at least let's have it run through, um, since it's only a couple of days, let's have it run also through um, the tens months, right? And so up until this date. So 2021. And, um, and so it, it, it's going to run over only on that, or over that specified period, right? Um, and so when you go into that scene creation, there is this task that you have to do um, where you, you have to create this dynamic file that is going to manipulate this specific parameters um, when you actually run your backtest, right? And so this re reverse equals false is um, just a parameter where um, depending on what, how your data is sorted, um, in this case, the data is being sorted um, on a data sending level, right? So the latest date is um, found at, at the bottom. Um, and um, the normal convention is the opposite way. And so, um, yeah, and so this reverse, you'd have to reverse the specific parameter if your data was sorted the other way around. Um, yeah, and so just like that, we've given um, our cerebral or our main actor the data, right? We've given it a data to actually 
do some manipulations on but we're not doing any manipulations yet we've given it we've given it some data um it has some specific value um that it is starting off with right starting off with uh 1000 usd um one thousand dollars uh and yeah and we've we've given it the data but nothing else so if we still run our script yeah it has a starting portfolio value of 1000 and a final portfolio value of again 1000 um yeah um so now we get into the interesting aspect because we've really not done anything we've not placed any trades um we've not is that a question um yes uh what do we mean by por portfolio value um portfolio value means the amount of money in your portfolio right the amount of money that you have um so let's say you you have that i have invested or like that i have on like currently um so it would all depend okay like so if you wanna if you wanna invest if you have this good strategy um and if you re if you want to simulate your life like you'd take the amount of money that you have right um, in this case, we're assuming you just want to invest one thousand um, dollars, and so you're giving it to your um, back testing engine, um, to your Cerebro engine, uh, or to your actual broker. Um, so normally, um, your broker is the one that is going to buy or sell your shares for you, right? Um, so it is just the amount of money that you have. Okay, that's good. Cool. Thank you. Um, yeah, and but there is no s smart strategy or any logic that is happening at the moment um we're just we're, we've just given it a data so let's start off with the first strategy um yeah and so what this strategy does is um and print the close price of hd okay i don't think this is also doing anything um yeah so it is it creates a strategy what a strategy is um yeah is what you use to place that um buy or sell order right um so it might be um it might be just a random a random coin flip or um a random guess um where you just place a buy order um where you generate a buy signal or a sell signal um yeah but that strategy is what encapsulates everything right it can be it can, it can range from anything that you that you use to place your order. So let's create this strategy class. Um, yeah. So at the moment, it's not doing anything, but let's give this strategy to our broker, right? To the main to the main actor that is going to be uh, that is going to be placing the bets. Uh, so we've added a strategy, we've added this test strategy where it's going to use that to, to in our case, buy or sell this Netflix stock, right? Um, but yeah, when our broker actually goes here um, to actually check, um, you can see that there, is, there isn't really any logic, right? This is just um, a logging that is happening. But let's look at two of the most important uh, methods that we have here. Um, yeah, and the documentation explains it really well. Um, where in this in it, in this dunder in its method, um, it is getting access to the closing values, right? Um, so it is getting access to where is it? Yeah, to each of this this um, this column, uh, this closing column right here that you can see um yeah and it is getting access to that line that that we talked about right that's a specific line and so um when our engine when our strategy is initialized um it actually has access to all of those data and um all all, all the data in that specific line and that's how that iteration actually happens um and over on this next method um is when um when specific um when specific logic is actually called upon right so in each um on each bar of the data clock this next method is called um and iterates over uh 
that specific data, right? So in 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 in, in initialization, um, it gets all of the data um, over that range we've specified, and it it calls on this next method on each of those um, on each of those lines, right? So it calls on the next method here. It then goes on to call on the next method here. It, it goes on to call the next method here, right? Um, and so you could have uh, much more complicated logic over on your next function, um, which we're going to see. But at this point, it is just logging out each of those uh, each of those close values, right? That's that's just our strategy. So even now, um, even though we've given our our broker um, our broker this strategy, um, this strategy is still not doing anything. It's just um, printing the closing values. Um, and so we still won't see any difference in our um, portfolio value because we've given our broker money, um, but we've just told it to actually log out the closing values and nothing more. Uh, so if we run this, yeah, so over on the over on the specified date range, it just goes on to print those closing values that we have um, over on this Netflix.csv data, right? Uh, yeah, but we're, we've really covered lots of ground here, right? So over on this case, um, yeah, I think we can go on, still could keep on following um, the quick start. Um, yeah, one moment, sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so let's keep on following this documentation, this quick start page, um, and add some logic to our strategy, right? Um, yeah, and so what this does is um, over on what this adds on a strategy is if the price has been falling for um, for three consecutive periods. Um, in our case, we're using um, a daily time frame data. So if it keeps falling for three rows, it is going to buy, right? And this might be assuming that um, the price has really gone down, but there is going to be um, a correction where it's actually going to go back up again. And it's a good time to buy because the price has gone down, right? Um, yeah, and so as you can see, it is simply just um, a couple of nested if conditions that are just checking. Um, if the closing value has changed and it is using this Python indexing to check over the previous periods it has iterated on. So let's add that specific logic over here and it simply just places a buy order at that moment, right? So yeah, um, what we see is now our final portfolio has changed, right? Um, we've actually managed to make $86 um, over that small period that we had, right? Over a month and a week uh, period that was specified, we've managed to make $86 from a $1,000 investment, um, which is which is actually really good, right? This means an 8.6% return um, over just a period of a month and a week, which you do not, which you will not get I have a music, right? Yeah, which you will not get um, in any bank, right? You'd get maybe a one to maybe two percent um, interest um, over your money over even a period of a year. But yeah, this is this is really good, right? Um, but yeah, so what it, what this is doing is simply just placing a buy order. But we don't really know. You see that there are lots of buy creations that are actually happening, but we don't we're not completely sure our strategy tells our broker to actually go and buy that netflix stock right but we're not sure if our broker has actually bought it um if some error maybe have ha has happened where um we might not have had enough money 
um, to actually buy it. And yeah, if you see here, there there are actually um, three buy create order buy create buy create orders at the moment. So three times the closing value has actually um, gone down consecutively. Um, but if you actually bought a Netflix stock here at 592, um, you wouldn't be able to again buy at 624 because um, you've already spent um, more than half your money from that $1,000 over on this buy order, right? And so what probably has happened is you told your broker to buy here, right? And so it went on, um, so this is probably on a Friday. Um, so you can't place an order, the stock market does not trade over the weekend. So um, it then goes on to, your broker then goes on to buy it on Monday over on the next, um, over on the next trading window, right? And so the broker would have probably bought here, um, but when you tell it to buy again here, um, it will be saying, okay, I've, I've already bought it last time. Um, I'm just not going to do it. And so this order would probably not have been created. Um, this order would not have probably been placed, but we're not seeing that. And um, we're going to see that as we go along. But this is a really good start, right? We have a simple strategy. We just buy um, if there has been a, a consecutive downward trend um, over the price of a specific stock right? And we have managed to make some money. Um, and over on the strategy, as you can see here, um, it actually loses money, right? Or using that same strategy over, um, I don't know what data it is actually using. Um, I'm not sure you can check that out. Um, yeah, but it has, it has lost money. And so this, this is not a very, um, smart strategy, but it really might make, might make you a lot of money, right? Yeah. And it is what we've talked about. We don't know if it was executed and um, yeah, um, we're going to go on to add more logics into it um, to actually see more things. Um, does anyone have any questions from what we've talked about? I do have a question. Can I go on? Yeah, yeah. go on. Sure. Okay, so I, I can see there is a self dot data in the initializer. What exactly is that? I'm sorry, I didn't get that part when you talked about it. That's why I'm asking, sorry. Um, Just okay, briefly, so that's, yeah. Yeah, so the self.data, um, you give a specific data to your broker, right? Um, so this data, and so you can add multiple, uh, you can give, um, let's say if you do, if you actually want this to backtest, um, not just Netflix stock, um, but maybe also Apple stock or a Tesla stock, you could give this multiple data. And so what in this initialization of our strategy is, it is just getting that um, data value from this Netflix.csv file. Um, so okay. so you can pass it a, a list of uh, data sets, but in this case, you just brought zero to get the first data set, yeah. is that right? Yeah, okay. yeah. so if you used, I believe, I'm not sure, uh, but if you just used, um, self dot data dot close um it should also work i think we can try it out yeah so yeah this gets the this is the same as this For since what? we just yeah. have the data yeah um yeah and I, I also thought that data close was the uh, variable that uh, is like it's the one feature but I, I i don't think that's the case here because the whole data is uh, being put on the data close uh, yeah. variables. So, yeah, here we're, exactly. okay. we're getting the entire column. This data close is getting the entire column and this next is oh, okay. uh, being called on each row of that column. Oh, okay, I see. So, okay, okay, I see. That's why the it is being indexed again in the uh, yeah. next uh, function. Yes. Yeah. yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Um, yeah, Kubaski? Yeah, uh, just I was uh, just similar with fish, but uh, my question is, I think there is a close variable. So what, what does the close variable tells for the trader strategy? I think there is close and there is buy, something like that in the mm -hmm. output. So what does really the close variable tells on the trading? Okay, so um, if we, okay, I've, I've, I'm sharing my entire screen, right? Um, if we see... Um, 
and just take um, chart and just um, see a single image. Um, yeah, so over on this case, right, um, you can see this. Um, so when you trade, right, um, there is um, over on the stock market, it is different over on crypto because the crypto market is open 24 seven. Um, and that's why I, I think I, I saw a question on Slack um, over um, what data to actually use because there are multiple options, but over on this case of the stock market, um, so trading starts um, at a specific time, right? Uh, and so that specific time where um, the stock market actually opens and um, there is some value, so there is a given value at which, uh, at which that stock is trading, um, that is the opening price, right? That was, that's the opening price for that specific day for that specific asset. And throughout the day, there might be specific, there might be lots of variations where it could have gone up from that opening, uh, from that opening uh, value and reached a maximum point, right? Um, and that would be the high one. Um, and it could have really gone down as well. Um, and the minimum value that it would have traded throughout the day would be um, the low value. Um, and uh, the closing value would be by the end of the day, there is a specific value that is set for that specific asset. And that, um, that value um, at which um, the price of that asset has actually ended at the end of the day is the closing value. And this adjusted close is um, an adjusted value based on um, different conditions. At this point, yeah, it is exactly the same because um, it's actually um, quite different conditions conditions that can lead to this, right? Um, for example, one one case that I can think of is um, if there is maybe a stock split, right? So if um, if a company decides to split the shares of data, right? So if um, like Netflix is trading at five ninety, um, and let's say they have a million shares, right? Um, but they actually want to increase the number of shares and divide it along many more shareholders. And so if they uh, if they decide to split the shares into three um, and have maybe um, three million shares, at the end of the day, that price would have to be adjusted, right? Because one share would then be worth around maybe $200. And so this closing and adjusted close would have uh, difference and the volume is just the amount uh, it's just the volume that is traded throughout the period. Um, and so that is the close of this candlestick data, this OHLCV that we use. Um, yeah, and this is just iteration over that period. Uh, is, is, does that make things clear? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, not me. Okay, I have a quick question on the uh, portfolio initial cash. So we should we can apply a, a different strategies for a different uh, for a different value. So, like for example, for a hundred dollars, can we apply a different set of rules? And also for a thousand value, we can we set a different set of rules? Just the the does the, the general profit depends on the on that on the initial value, especially. It depends on the strategy, but also what is the effect of the initial value? Um, yeah, okay. So the initial value, of course, um, if we're talking about the percentage of return that you'd get, um, it would all it would all be the same, right? You've made um you've made an eight point six percent return over a thousand dollars because it's the same strategy. And if you had used um if you had used much uh, if you had used much more of your portfolio or much more money, you would make more, but the percentage of return would be the same. Um, but there are more advanced concepts which um, go into like how much of that asset um, you actually want to buy. Um, so if you can see here, um, one, 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 just buying one share of Netflix is going to cost you $590. And so if you had uh, just a hundred dollars, you wouldn't be able to actually buy that single share, right? And so the default is um, to buy just a single, um, 
a single stake of that specific asset. So if you had a hundred, uh, if you had if you had a hundred dollars to start off with, um, it wouldn't go on to actually buy anything, and your portfolio would still be um, the hundred dollars that you've given to the broker. Um, yeah. So the final portfolio value would be a hundred because you're still telling your broker, okay, buy buy me um, a Netflix stock, buy me a Netflix stock, but um, you don't have enough money to buy it. Um, so it, it is, you can get the, and if you wanna implement different strategies um, or maybe even different um, data feeds, right? So if um, you just have a hundred dollars, maybe allocated, um, use something that I can maybe afford, like add a different data, data paths. Um, this, this are just simply variables, right? Um, you can store this value that um, your broker has and just have uh, a simple if condition, if else condition um, that is manipulating everything that's happening. Um, yeah, does, does that answer things? Yeah, yeah it does. Good. Thank um, you. Um, Fisa? Yeah, okay, so I have two questions. So the first one is I see in the uh, next uh, function, I see the I see, uh, yeah, I see the data close uh, iterating and you told me that it is one line basically. So we are actually uh, comparing the this one with the previous line, right? Yes. So the question here would be, uh, what, ex what feature is it exactly calculating? Because how is it calculating basically two rows? What what is it? Uh, what is what is it actually looking for? Which feature or what exactly is it looking for? And the second one would be: Can you say a little bit more on what a stake is or a state? I'm not sure. You just said something about that. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So this this is just a dummy um, strategy that is just using um, that is just calculating. Um, if the value has been going down, right? Um, so what it is doing is over on over on a specific next call, right? So it is, we've said that it is iterating over each of this um, rows. So what it is doing is, okay, it is, um, if you don't have a previous row for this, um, our strategy um, requires three rows at least, right? So it's not going to do any calculation for um, this one because there there isn't any row previous to it and it's not going to do any calculation because there isn't enough data to actually um, do this calculation right but when it gets here um, it has access to all of the data feeds that it has actually iterated on right so it can go back and actually check the values right so what it what it is simply just doing is um, okay um, we're at this specific line iteration at the moment. Um, so at this specific line iteration, um, is the previous value higher than um, what it is at the moment? Um, in that case, okay, good. Uh, yeah, and again. Okay. So it's actually iterating over the close feature. Yes, yeah, over okay. the, cl the close column. So iterating over each of the uh, rows that happen. Um, yeah, and um, over on the staking mechanism, um, it, it is just... Um, the default stake is uh, by a default of one. Um, so you can look into a more of site more on, um, I believe, Sizer's impact trader. Uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So Sizer's, where you could actually specify, um, where you could actually specify what. Um, what amount you actually want to buy. And I think even on the quick start, it might actually go through that. So we can go more into it um, um, later on. So you can specify, okay, buy, uh, buy me two shares, of, uh, two shares of Netflix, right? Two shares of Netflix stock. So if you, uh, and in our case, we're starting off, uh, let's get this back to $1,000. Um, so we could tell our broker to buy us um, two shares of Netflix, but we probably wouldn't be able to afford it with our thousand dollars because um, a single share is trading at over six hundred dollars, and we wouldn't be able to afford it, and our order would not be placed in that case. 
Um, okay, so basically a stake is like the agreement or the condition that you are setting between you and the broker on how many, uh, how many, how how much uh, shares to buy. So basically stake means the number of shares and something related to that context. Um, yeah, yeah. So it, it can, in the concept of back trader and in this specific back testing, uh, that's how we're using stake. But um, yeah, um, over on the crypto world and um, over also on the financial market, staking can have uh, lots of different meanings. Um, so um, yeah, uh, over on the financial market, um, I think uh, I've also seen resources that have been shared. Um, so positions that you can open on, on a specific stock when you buy um, or sell a stock are, you can open two types of positions um, normally um on most markets right um you can open a long position and you can open a short position um going long means um going like betting to the market right uh being in favor of the market um so if you go long on uh a stock of netflix you are um you're betting that the price of netflix is going to go up right and so you'd buy you'd buy um, the stock on Netflix and maybe hold it um, for a specific time because you believe that the price is going to go up. Um, and so if you, but if you believe that its price is actually going to go down, um, you can go short, um, you can open a short position, uh, which would mean you'd borrow, you'd borrow from someone else, you'd sell that to someone else and hold the money um, and tell the, pers the first person that you borrowed from that, um you're actually going to give them back uh their share sometime later on when it actually when the price actually goes down um and um if the pro and during that specific period where you don't pay uh where you're holding that where you're holding that money um you'll be paying interest to that person um and so staking can have um lots of definitions and even when you go into crypto it goes into um uh, yeah and in that case you could uh, is that is that a question? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, I was wondering, like, for example, on some scenarios, we might not gain anything. Like, we might lose, we might lose some value uh, on our initial value based on our initial value. So, is there any ways, like, we could iterate over, like, and fix those issues before returning the actual, the final result? Um, uh, I, I'm not sure I get that. Okay, Is, there might be scenarios where we we might not get a, any profit at all mm -hmm. after using some strategy. Mm -hmm. So, is there any way like we can use we can like for example like we can back pro propagate and also fix some some issues like there might be some mistakes in the strategy. Is there any ways like? To fix um, such um, so what you're talking about might be optim optimizing that strategy right um so talking about the concept of back propagation um yeah it is to maybe if um like in this dummy strategy we're using um three data points uh to actually iterate over right um so maybe if we look back to and check if it has been going down for maybe a period of 10 days uh we might make profits right but if we just check for a period of three days um if we just take a period of three days um we're not going to make any profit so you could um you could optimize your strategy and we we will uh i think uh i'm not sure it will be that necessary but we i think we can we can look to it um if we are okay we, if we have that uh yeah but it is all covered also on the quick start page um or how you can optimize specific parameters for um, specific indicators. And um, even uh, Backtrader actually has this um, default where you don't have to statically pass um, those parameters, but you can pass in a range of values and it would um, go on and taste each of, uh, each of the values that are within that range. And so it would go on to to choose that uh, best scenario. Um, yes, for so. Okay, so uh, this is uh, more like uh, 
related but not a real technical question so i don't know how much you've been uh invested in this back uh testing thing and i don't know about the overall structure but is this uh i, I can imagine you can create lots and lots of uh different well-planned and detailed strategies and you can implement them so the question would be is why isn't this being uh abused i mean is it is it being abused and i don't we don't know about it because we just started using this thing but um, or is it like not being abused at all in the uh, real world um like i think i can even share like really interesting papers um if you go and read like the initial uh over on this on on the first page of the challenge um it specifically tests states that um any gains um any gains that are profited when you when are, are, are actually um achieved over on your back test um don't actually guarantee you any returns right um and so there have been even lots of uh research that are stating right uh that technical analysis is um really bollocks right and there are people who are um, who really look into the fundamentals, like um, even Warren Buffett, right? Um, so they do research over um, specific companies, and they don't use um, any technical indicators or any of the assets because um, the market is really random, right? And there have even been research where um, coin flips um, have actually outperformed most of the technical indicators that you can actually implement. Um, so abusing uh, a specific strategy is really, really difficult, and um, not not a, not everyone like almost ninety nine point nine nine percent of people who actually um, try it out will will not they will not make money. You might make money uh, initially, but yeah, it, it's really difficult. Yeah, but he, that, that's the point. Exactly, that's the point. You see, when uh, I'm, 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 I'm very, really uh, sh not sure about what I'm saying, but I'm just saying it out. And the thing is, when we create these uh, strategies, it's not the same as when Warren Buffett is actually trying to implement his own strategies, right? He has a really nice business understanding. Maybe he is uh, one of the greatest investors of all time. So he really knows what he's talking about when he's actually thinking about a strategy. But the pro the only difference here is when he is actually uh, going out in the real world and buying or selling the shares, he's actually doing that uh, in a non-technical manner or personally, but using these strategies, he can actually, I'm not even talking about Warren Buffett specifically, anybody that has a real business knowledge of what he's doing on a share can actually use this, right? I mean, maybe I don't get the whole point, but... Well, my, thing, my point is, yeah, yeah, my point is, I think it's actually better to use this type of simulations instead of actually thinking about them. I know there is this gut instinct on this whole uh, personal, uh, you know, things that really makes a difference. But I, I, I don't, I, okay, I don't know. Maybe I see some potential in it, but maybe it's because it's my first time and I don't really know about this. Oh. Maybe I'm having this feeling, right? Yeah, yeah no it's definitely um you can make really definitely solid returns um using technical both technical analysis there have been people who have really made um uh, significant returns right um but yeah um the fact that um you're always getting these signals and you're always um seeing those returns right we've seen um an 80, 86 dollars over a period of months which is um absurd um, but if I go on now um, and use that uh, use that strategy to actually place an order, um, I can actually bet you um, eighty six dollars that it's actually going to lose money. Um, it, it might make money, but it's probably going to lose money. Um, yeah, yeah and, the, re the risk is yeah. going to be more than yeah. the reward, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's not like um, a specific. Uh, um, like model um overfitting um or something where like you could um have a training you could have a training 
um, data and it is definitely going to do well over on your test data after you tune some parameters, right? It's really unpredictable yeah. at the moment, uh, especially if you go into the crypto market. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, okay. there is definitely yeah. lots I of- really, I really get, I really, I really get what you're saying. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, do we have, yeah, we've set it to a thousand dollars. Where were we? Um, yeah, so falling three sessions in a row by, um, and we made some good money over that period of our back test, right? Um, yeah, and several, this buy create orders were, um, created, but yeah, we've faced issues where, um, we don't know if they were actually executed. Um, we've talked about how. Um, we wouldn't even have actually enough money over at this time to actually buy those shares, right? And so let's add some more logic into it. Um, at this point, it's stating that it doesn't only want to buy, but it actually wants to sell, right? Um, so you want to make profit off of volatility. Um, so you don't, um, you can, you can simply just use the buy and hold strategy where you go on and buy a specific asset and you hold it through time. Uh, thinking that it is going to increase in value, right? Um, and that is a strategy in its own. Um, but if you want to make uh, money over on that volatility, um, there are specific bear and bull markets where um, prices go up uh, for a certain duration and they really go down uh, for a certain duration, right? And we've, we've been, um, I think since the start of this year, um, since the start of 2022, um, we've had this really bearish run um, over on everything, right? Um, and so you 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 can really take um, advantage of um, this up and down movement that goes on through time. Um, yeah. So having uh, having an exit point, having an exit strategy um, is really good. Um, yeah. And all. And so I think let's copy paste this entire strategy and go over uh, what it does. So let's replace this simple test strategy that we have um, and go over the concepts that it has, right? Um, yeah, so it is creating this um, new variable to keep track of um, orders that you've given to the broker, right? So this go and buy me uh, something uh, or go and sell something for me. Um, yeah, and there is this new notify order method um, that is just logging out if a buy order has been executed and if that sell order has been executed. Or in the case that we had like, um, if we ha maybe had less money, um, our order wouldn't be accepted, right? If our broker goes on, uh, takes hun that hundred dollars and tries to buy something that's worth six hundred dollars, no one's gonna, no one's gonna give it to the to the broker, and so our order would be cancelled, right? And we have this, uh, we have this uh, still next method, which is iterating over the rows, um, and the, what this is doing is it is checking if we are in the market or if we are. Um, so if we're not in a position, right? So if we, um, so we've talked about um, positions, that's not a question, right? Okay, yeah, so we've talked about um, the two positions that are available, right? So it can be, we can open a long position, um, we can open a short position. Um, in this case, um, so yeah, this is um, for, um, and this is against, right? So we're betting it goes down, we're betting it goes up. Um, and this is if we are not in any of these positions, right? If we're just um, holding that thousand dollars we're investing, we want to go in and check if we actually want to buy or if we actually want to go into a long position, right? And it is um, just logging that there has been this buy creation or this buy order, um, to the broker, right? Um, but if we are already in position, um, we actually want to check a specific condition and um, maybe either sell or actually hold, right? And so in this in this simple strategy, what it is doing is um, if we are in the market, just sell it after five days, right? So what it is doing is 
if the price has been going down for three days, buy it because it is probably going to go up, right? So it buys it. Um, and there is the specific date on which it buy and on which it buys it, right? So if we uh, take this strategy over this period of October, right? Um, we go on to say, okay, so if it's been going down um, October 1, October 2, October 3, um, buy it on October 3rd, right? Um, because it's probably going to go up. Uh, but whatever happens, um, after five days, um, after five positions, because we're using day values, like remember, um, it really doesn't matter. This, uh, this line that you're passing in, in at this point, it is, um, it is dates, but it can be anything. It can be seconds. It can be minutes. Um, it can be months. It can be years. It can be a week. It can be anything, right? It is, it is just this concept of lines that is happening. So around this period we're using uh we're using dates so um check five iterations and after if we've if we've bought uh, the stock of netflix um and five days have passed um just sell it right um and so that is that is what it's doing i believe um the next method yeah so exit after five bars right so you'd tell it to just sell right it's been five days um so sell whatever sell whatever shares of netflix that i have at the moment um yeah and so that is that is just what it's adding um that that is the logic that it has added um over on our strategy right um so if we actually see our value now we see this um execution right we can now check that okay um, the order that we've placed to the broker, right? We've gone and told it to buy the share of Netflix um, and sell that share of Netflix. And we can see that it has been executed. Um, so let's go to the initial piece where, okay, over on the 24th, um, we're like, okay, we wanna buy it, right? Um, and we tell our broker to buy it, but they can only buy it over on the next iteration, right? And so they have to wait for that specific, that next candle to actually buy it. And um, it goes to become the weekend. And so they, they have to wait till Monday to buy it. And they buy, uh, they buy their share of Netflix and even at a better price because the price has actually even gone down on Monday. Um, but you look throughout the week and you just, you don't do anything, right? You're, you're already in position, but it has not been, five bars since um this execution has happened right but after five bars has passed um you shout to your broker sell whatever you have at the current price right and over on the next day your broker goes on to execute that sell order and you can see um over on the strategy you've you've managed to make um how much like around twenty dollars um just over that that small period right um, and then you would go on to be outside of position, right? You would not be in position anymore because you've sold whatever shares you have. Um, and so you'd then go on to check for the initial position that for it, for that initial condition that you, that you're waiting for to get into the market, right? To buy again. Um, and so you'd wait for that. So for three consecutive, um, downward trends. We can see it was at 632, it went down to 627, it went down to 624, and then you shout to your broker, um, go buy me some shares um, of Netflix. Um, and it would go on to then execute it, right? And you'd have um, you'd have a specific portfolio value at the end. Um, yeah. Um, okay, so we have made some money. We've made 18 dollars and 80 cents but um we have not considered commissions into place right um so when you're trading really like um especially if you were um trading over on really short durations um there are uh there are broker fees and there are actually multiple there, there can be multiple types of fees right um and over on crypto um or any other market there are there are um there are fees that you have to pay. Um, and so in this case, it is commission. Um, 
yeah, but there can be those transaction fees um, that you actually that you actually pay to maybe um, an exchange like um, Binance.com, FTX, um, or any crypto exchange um, that actually charges you some amount of money for the asset that you're buying, right? So if you want to buy one Bitcoin, you're going to be charged um, you're going to be charged some amount for that purchase. Um, for that specific purchase, right? Yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so here it is just taking the 0.1% um, commission uh, and adding that to the broker fees because that can that can bring uh, a can be, that can bring a difference um, over on each trade that we make, right? So we are paying fees when we buy, we're paying fees when we sell. Um, there are options where you don't have to, where where you don't have to pay and it, it would all depend on specific um, conditions that you'd have to check, right? And so we had made um, $18 over here, um, but considering those commissions, um, we now have made less money. Right, um, and if you were trading really lots of times, your commission fees um, might actually be so much um, that you actually lose on uh, lose, yeah, that you actually lose um, by the end of the day. Yeah, and so that is just the commission that we've added. Um, yeah, so. Um, I think customizing the strategy parameters. Um, yeah, this this adds on to the question um, that Nathaniel that asked uh, previously, um, where you can have specific parameters. Um, like in this case, we've just used um, an exit bar of five um, to actually exit. Um, and yeah, you can set specific parameters. I'm not sure. Well, my param 27 is, uh, yeah, I think it's just a dummy parameter. Um, yeah, and you could add it to the specific strategy and you can then go on to use it in your strategy, right? And you can go on to reference it, to reference this on your strategy. Um, yeah, you can go and um, look over this since we're out of time, let me focus on, uh, I think, core concepts. Um, yeah, so indicators, um, I think this is where, um, really the interesting part happens, um, when you're backtesting and when you're developing your strategies, right? Um, and so indicators, um, those technical indicators that we've been talking about, um, those moving average, those, um, tons of indicators that exist out there, um, you can actually integrate them into your into your strategy um, and use that as a signal to either buy um, or sell um, that specific asset, right? Um, yeah, and so what it is doing is at this moment, it is just uh, calculating a simple moving average, right? Um, so if we add it, um, we've said we have access to all of the data um, during initialization. So we're adding a moving average simple indicator. What a moving average is, um, is, uh, so let's say, um, let's take action this data itself. Um, we have this, um, and yeah, so we have, we have this consecutive values, right? So, and I think let's take maybe one more. Um, so what a moving average is, is it is it just takes a specific number and it calculates uh, the average over that period, right? So if you wanted to have a two day, um, a two day moving average over this four periods, what you would do is you'd add, uh, you'd add two of those periods and just divide them by two um to get that average value um and there are many types of actually moving average the exponential moving average weighted exponential moving average um yeah that you can look into but um yeah the simple moving average just um 
it just uses the average um, to calculate a specific trend. And um, one thing that you can see, or one trend that you can see is, um, so if the price, um, if the price has been, uh, ha if the price at the moment um, has been increasing, um, yeah, the moving average uh, would then still be going up, right? And it's, it's just a specific indicator that you can go on and look at. Um, yeah, so self.order.sell, yeah. And what it is doing is it is just substituting it over on the next where um, on each row, our specific logic to buy or sell uh, is called up one. Um, where we were using this um, this um, iterative loop where we were just checking previous data points and seeing, okay, this is less than um, the previous one, this is less than the previous one. It is now using this technical indicators, uh, technical indicator, in, in our case, this simple moving average. Um, yeah, and this is where you can actually substitute um, any of the indicators that Backtrader either provides and it also allows um, the use of anything. It, it really doesn't matter. You're just generating a signal uh, at the end of the day, right? But it really makes it easy um, by providing this abstraction of um, lots of technical indicators, I think. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so yeah, if you go into, uh, into the references indicator autoref, Uh, sorry, I didn't uh, follow up well. Uh, I had a internet connection problem. So can you please go over uh, the indicators? Like uh, that's where I just lost you a bit. So mm -hmm. can you quickly go over the implementation of indicators and what you've seen? Um, okay. Yeah. So um, that's actually, okay. yeah, technical yeah technical indicators are just indicators that we um, use to place a buy or a sell uh order right um they give us um uh, this they give us some indication of uh of what the market is right um so is it maybe going going to go up or maybe is it going to go down um and so that is just the case um over on initialization we're just adding um this indicators that back trader actually provides um i've shared the the link to uh, the default built-in indicators, and there is the wrapper for uh, TA lib, um, which is a really famous, uh, a really famous library. This is actually the Python wrapper for uh, the initial one that you can look into, which provides uh, implementation for um, lots of indicators that are that have been um, developed by people around the world. Um, yeah. But that is just doing it. Yeah, it, it is taking the specific data that we've taken from this CSV file um, and just calculating that moving average um, over a period of, okay, so self dot params. Yeah. So this is the specific period that we actually use to specify uh, our moving average, right? let's say just over a moving average period of five days um you and you can use the specific parameters that we've uh we've passed to before to make this a bit more dynamic um okay yeah so we now have this um self.sma um and let's replace our logic here um over on the next method we don't have to replace everything right so just this if else conditions um we were using where, where is the next method yeah so we were just checking the specific rows and the specific um changes in price um here to place a specific order but now we want to use this uh technical indicator right so we want to use this technical indicator to place our buy order um and if we are in position and to actually sell we also want to use this uh, moving average, right? So this moving average gives us a general trend. Um, and so if the current price is actually greater than the general trend, we can say that, um, yeah, at least the moving average um, assumes that the market is still going to go up and up, 
right? There is this um, upward momentum going on. Um, but over on that um, over on that range, if the current value is actually um, under that uh, under that average value, um, the this simple moving average indicator. Um, or this implementation that we have at the moment assumes that there is this um, downward trend going on, right? Um, and then it goes on to place that sell order. Uh, and so, yeah, so using that technical indicator that at, on our previous run, we only had, um, what was it? Yeah, we, we, had, we had like a uh, thousand, we, we made like $15. Um, but if we had used this simple moving average, um, we would have made actually thirty dollars, right? And that is including commission. Um, yeah, so thirty thirty dollars is what what percent is it? Um, yeah, so yeah, it's it's a it's a pretty good return over um, over just a period of we're still using um, that limited period. Where was it? Um, when we set, when we got the data feed, right? Yeah, so over on this uh, range that we had. Um, yeah, and there are really multiple um, things that you can add up on over on the optimization of that. Um, you could provide a range instead of, um, where is it? Yeah, so that moving average, right now it is just using that trend um, we're calculating on is just using it on a period of five days, right? Um, and so if we change this to eight, eight days, we'll have a different value, right? We've now made even more money. Uh, so let's say we use 12 days. Um, and now we've actually lost money. Uh, we've, we've not lost money in general, but we've made way less money. Um, and um, yeah, Backstrader handles this um dynamic trial where you can pass on uh pass in a range um instead of a specific value and it would iterate over um and actually optimize this um yeah but we're not going to look into that right so this is just a basic back testing overview because we're going to build um that infrastructure that um we've talked about yesterday um that gen in that general pipeline and really not focus into uh, more this technical analysis part because um, I mean, definitely like um, really, this is really interesting um, aspect, at least even personally um, and definitely look into this, but I think this is, this is enough to get started. Um, yeah, and um, also the other, um, the other frameworks that we specified, I think it was uh, vector BT. Uh, vector BT um, yeah, so this Python package also does similar things, but um, yeah, it's it's not really, uh, yeah, it is really fast. So if maybe you were doing really regular back tests and um, you were into high frequency trading, you might want to use this because it, it is a bit faster than Backtrader. Um, but you will not really get, you will have to really do lots of things on Backtrader um, and Vector BT really simplifies things a lot, but I do love this um, this implementation of back, what Backtrader has because it really shows you the flow of um, how even the general stock market, even before uh, like everything was, um automated actually worked right and you'd really get to see this um flow clearly but vector bt if you wanted it to be faster and um depending on the approach that you're going to use over the challenge um on the final tasks of the week of the challenge um you can choose to go on and uh build um a trading bot um and so frick trade is um gives you this um beautiful ui um to actually even start off with your trading bot and allows you to just specify a json config that you can get started with in a couple of minutes and have a trading bot running and so it also allows this back testing it's not as advanced as back trader because back trader is really built for back testing this is um this is something that is built for a trading bot um but if it is that if 
you're planning to go over that approach as well. Um, and you don't want to have this mix of having a different backtesting framework um, and having a different trading platform. You can go over um, and use this backtesting, where is it? Um, yeah, the backtesting um, engine that Frick Trade actually provides, right? And so at the end of the day, they're all just doing some mathematical calculations underneath. You can even build your own backtesting engine, um, but you don't have to because other people have done it already um yeah but this this is the basics and um that's why we've given you multiple options depending on um what you want to do depending on um, what type of approach you want to take um basically everything is the same so yeah um i think this is um um this is this is all the topics that i wanted to cover for today um if anyone has any questions um God, be happy to take them. Yeah. Okay. Nathaniel. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Mm. Um, yes, I can. I can hear. Okay. Uh, I want to ask, uh, how do you know that our strategy is working at the maximum efficiency? I mean. Uh, just a few minutes ago, you were setting the period to five and we get a high output. Then mm -hmm. you set it to 12 and suddenly it decreased, right? Yes. So so how do we know uh, the efficiency of our strategy? Um, yeah, so that's that's the point of back testing, right? And that's why you have um, specific metrics. Um, so right now we've just looked at the return or the portfolio that we end up with right um and there are okay if i think i might have access to the week eight no okay um yeah so i i don't have it open at the moment but there are really lots of metrics that you can actually use to test that that efficiency that you're looking for, right? Um, so over on the different parameters, we found different returns, right? And so return can be one metrics, one metric that you're using. Um, but there are really um, there are really lots of metrics um, that you can use, right? And I, I think the one of the most famous ones is the sharp ratio, uh, which is the risk-free return. Um, which takes in the volatility or the risk that you've actually taken to get that return, right? Um, and so we've gotten, like, yeah, like you've said, we've gotten um, $16 here and we had gotten like $34 here, right? But the risk that we took um, to actually get that $34 uh, might not have been worth um, the additional $15, right? Um, so if we really took less, if we really took less risk um, on getting this, and if we had uh, maybe a higher sharp ratio um, over on over on implementing this strategy over on this uh, specific period, um, even making less return might be the might be the way to go for different people, right? So it all depends on what you actually want to do and what type of metrics are you actually using. To, and what type of goals do you actually have and want to actually reach? Um, if, if that makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. But the thing I don't get it is uh, if you're involving the risk taking measurement or if you're involving the risk as a measurement, uh, doesn't that uh, take the human, you know, gut feeling? Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, the whole point of this uh, back testing is to remove the feeling of human, right? So just to let us think as a machine. Um, yeah, of course. But um, yeah, this back testing is to simulate a specific environment. But at the end of the day, um, like, let's see. Uh, okay, let me uh, find market cap. Let, let me share a graph so I think things are more clear, right? Okay, so over on the last seven days. Mm -hmm. So there is 
like lots of volatility as you can see right um if we go over a period of uh seven days the volatility is really high if it's gone from 20 tough from a high point of uh, more than twenty thousand to then nearly under nineteen thousand, right so yeah. yeah there are like depending at the end of the day you 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 have some goals and you like that specific risk um might not really be worth it right so you might be lucky um um on a single trade but overall um overall some time uh that risk might not actually be worth it and really look into the sharp ratio it's um, a really widely used uh risk assessment uh metrics um where like it would actually take um so if if you didn't want to take any risk right what what would you normally do you'd take your money you'd put it in a bank right um and yeah. that bank might give you some interest um and that specific interest might be your risk free rate right yes. um yeah and you can take that specific percent um and if you let's say may manage to make uh a 10 percent return um you've really outperformed the bank but um during that specific volatility or maybe like um during that specific volatility period you might have uh lost a lot of money and even if you are actually even maybe using um leverage um to actually increase the amount that you trade um you might you might wipe out your entire portfolio um so yeah that's yeah you definitely risk is something you really need to take into consideration okay thank you that yeah. makes sense okay um yeah i'm tonight yes can you hear me um yes i can hear you Yes. So, to just to, to see if I understand correctly, so uh, we are going to in the data in the data pipeline. We're going to build. We're going to be implementing a, a code that uses a back trader or something similar, and uh, and the and the parameters for a strategy will be coming from the users in the front end. Is that correct? Um. No. No. Um, no. No. Uh. Like this the strategies no you you like you can do that but that will definitely make things a um, lot more complicated right so you can so have what um, are what are the users going to choose or what are they supposed to be seeing um they can see they can just see like a specific um range or specific parameters that um they actually want to run your back test on right so you can still see my screen so um let's say you implement this simple moving average indicator and um also add in an additional exponential moving average indicator right um and so one option one more or less easy option that you can have is um you can have the use the user or the ui be able to actually manipulate this period parameter um and actually um, send a request to your backend to run a specific backtest, right? Um, and so this this backtest, like right now, it's not doing anything. I think um, Vector Vector BT um, has uh, where was it uh, usage maybe quick start? Yeah. So this are lots of metrics, right? So um, for a specific run, so in this in this time, this is um, this is running over a period of six years. Uh, so it, it's a backtest that has run over a period of six years and it has generated um, this um, this specific metrics, right? It has had a maximum drawdown of 70%. And this, this also goes down um, to Nathanael's previous question, um, where at some point in time, we've actually lost 70% of um, your portfolio. So if you had a thousand dollars, that thousand dollars has gone down to three hundred dollars, and that's something you don't want. Um, but there are these specific metrics that it generates, and so the user can get access to those specific metrics um, for specific runs, right? And so if that has, if that backtest has run for, let's say, a period of, uh, 
using a period, a moving average using a period of five days, you would go on, you would go in and get those metrics from your database and show it to the user, right? I'm re I'm requesting results for the backtest. If they don't exist, um, I'm going to be requesting your server to run that backtest using this specific parameter for me. Um, if I was to go on and implement um, a specific strategy, pass you maybe a small snippet of code, you can you can also use that approach, and that that would be a more interesting approach. But that would be a definitely um, a difficult thing to do, um, at least a more difficult thing to do. So, just simple manipulations of um, default indicators um, that you've played around with. Okay, so they cannot. Um, I mean, the users cannot choose like to sell after a particular signal we have to we are just going to provide a part, uh, like a few um strategies that are already like implemented and then they can just maybe choose a few parameters but not really have a free mm -hmm. uh, i don't know I, I i okay i i don't completely understand what the users will be able to choose or what they're supposed to yeah maybe so my question is not clear <laughs> Um, no, no, it is, it is, it is, um, yeah, so, like, um, you go on and implement this simple moving average, right? Um, and so, over on the UI, I think, let me create some, maybe, um, yeah, so, you've gone on to create, uh, an, an, an SME indicator, right? So, and that indicator, um, you can have, um, multiple back tests that have, you you already have, let's say, uh, multiple back tests that are already run, right? Multiple back tests that already have those results. So if a user, let's say, um, wants to simply see the back tests, uh, wants to see the return, the returns, the maximum drawdown, the sharp ratio, um, and any other metrics that you've generated, um, and wants to see those results over specific parameters. Um, that parameter may be being just a simple period, in our case, a simple period, and uh, maybe another parameter can be the Netflix stock, right? Um, so over on the crypto challenge, this can be, this can range from multiple things uh, or multiple crypto assets, right? It could be Bitcoin, it can be Ethereum, uh, it can be XRP, um, it can be lots of assets, right? So the user can choose an asset, uh, and they can choose a specific period. And if you have implemented multiple uh, indi technical indicators, they can also choose an indicator um, and they can get that specific backtest result. Um, and over on your continuation tasks, it just doesn't become uh, this visualization, but um, it becomes creating this sort of uh, portfolio collection um, where you have uh, where you can, where you, where you get, where you get multiple assets, um, yeah, or actually even do the bot that trades for it. Um, there are multiple approaches you can take um, over on the last task, um, but yeah, over on the UI side, I, I think is, does that make things clear? Uh, yeah, I think it's it's clearer. Yeah, I um, there are details, but I, I think uh, maybe reading the documents and also start after we start to work, we can see. Yeah how it would work thank you yeah definitely when you run multiple after you run multiple back tests after you, uh, you run um yeah after you implement multiple indicators you'll definitely see the flow um of what types of things are actually changing and what type of things actually make um specific differences um yeah uh yeah so I think, um, does anyone else have any questions? Um, yeah, if not, we can um, end here. Um, because I, I, yeah, I think we took, I took too much time, but yeah. Um,